Hey, greetings YouTube. Performance reviews where I give the review and technical tutorials from the technician's point of view. And today, I've got a hunk of junk. I have a Kenmore progressive canister. And if you're unaware, these get recommended to people by people who don't know any better. But after a couple of years, these kind of take a shit. And they're a design left over from the 1980s that they've slowly improved upon, but a lot of the improvements haven't been the best. As I, this is probably the biggest problem. Not so much that it's a bag, but there's no gasket on the bag. And even if you buy the better filtering material, this is a, this is the wrong bag for the unit. It should be synthetic, but it never makes a good gasket seal here. So this is probably the biggest problem is it leaks dust into the canister. Always, always, always. These always come in pretty beat up. I think the other thing, you know, headphone warning, cause this is just loud, is that they have this filter hitting here and, oh, <laughs> that is no longer filtering. So that needs to be changed as well. And it doesn't really direct all the air through the filter anyways. It leaks all over as you'll see when I take it apart. Now, as if that was not enough to turn you off, this machine, <laughs> like every single other one I've seen, has broken wheels, which means you need to replace the whole base assembly. This is not something I'd recommend you do yourself. I would definitely just bring this to your local vacuum store. Um, luckily, the new owners of Kenmore have made a few parts available um, to independent dealers, which is nice. But if you wanted to collect on the warranty, good luck. Uh, <laughs> they might send you a new one in the mail. They might not. So the way this comes apart is not only two screws, but there are these clips everywhere. And then it comes apart. You can see how nasty this is. You see how the air channel squared off. It's not very efficient. And that's one of the other problems with this is this is based on such an old design that it's just missing a lot of design cues and improvements. They have made little updates over the years, like they've gone to a better belt design. This one is pretty fried. Gosh, this is just this just gets worse the more I look at it. I should have quoted the customer higher, but you can see that this belt has started to split. That probably should be replaced. You can also see that the tolerances are pretty loose on this thing. And all this stuff, this is normal built up build up for this. Nothing the customer did. This is just normal for this crack pot of a design. As you can see, it's like real loose. There's just not much to this. And in the 80s, this was fine. This was on par. But here it's 2023, and why would you suffer through this? This is like, this is just like torturing yourself with bad equipment for no, no reason. And these machines are, you know, three, four hundred dollar machines. So you might as well get something better for your money. Gosh. Uh, that is just gross. I have to reuse that, unfortunately. There is the motor. We're stripping as many parts out of this as we can. Some of these parts are going to get washed, some of them are going straight to the trash. Get washed, and then this is gonna get. Whoop. You can just you can just see where the plastic is just. That's how brittle it is. It, it is just not good quality plastic. This is not even close to on par with some of the other stuff on the market. So that's what was just living in the power nozzle. That was lovely. The next thing we're going to do is strip the canister. All right, the first thing you want to do is be careful with it because you have to uh, you have to do this. Mm -hmm. 
and you pull those off it's one piece that's very standard it's like a lot of other canisters uh, I don't like to mess with this this thing breaks pretty easily the next filter that is just gross Now on to the rear. There are two screws under this pedal. How you remove the pedal is entirely up to you. There you go. And huh, that just came loose. That was cheating. You probably should remove the pedal, but all right. So as you can see, there's dirt leaking from here into this area here if I pull the cord rewind out oddly enough these cord rewinds are pretty decently built let me grab the just of this I have wedged you pull the rewind out you need to do this first uh, I thought you had more slack yeah you can just see all the dirt and stuff that just leaks you see these holes behind the wheels those are vent holes because they know it leaks so they want it to breathe and you can just see right there where that motor's just been leaking dirt everywhere so yeah sealed system this is not and there's uh some handwriting here which tells me that somebody else has been in this one at some point that's joyous so all well, comes apart easily enough why they tie it together like this absolutely beyond me you can see all the dust and dirt that's gotten into the motor that's uh, you can see all the dust and dirt that gets blown around and even when this filter is new and flowing dirt will still go in here so this is a just a design problem with this particular vacuum I'm gonna take this and wash this just as a courtesy to this customer uh, those are gonna be full of crud and they do put some sort of sound insulation they tried they tried they tried they tried that's the, the best way I could put this and you can see this little motor cinder said little high-speed motor it's had a rough life now there are power in there's control wires a lot of ways I can cut this off and do this I need to wash this. The biggest hack I can tell you about wiring these, if you're not familiar with wires, pull your phone out, take a picture of it if you're not sure what it is. There's quite a bit of logical sense to how this is wired, what things are when you look at them. other trick to doing wiring if you're unfamiliar with an item I'll show you another trade trick we can cut that off so that the yellow is right there you know the yellow goes to yellow white goes to white and black goes to black blue and red so that little bit Anyways, so we're cutting that off They'll get rewire nutted, but we gotta we gotta wash the rest of this. It is just absolutely horrendous and gross. There's a fuse in here, though I've never seen it go bad. So don't think that if your machine has no power, that that's what it is, because they are a okay. Always, always, always. The kind of thing that would break tri trigger this fuse would be, well, let's just say you'd have other problems. So we're gonna wash all of that stuff. We're gonna wash the housing. I'm gonna wash all these pieces. And when you turn the camera back on, everything will be clean and ready to be put back together. Well, folks, we have washed everything and it's time to start putting this together. Excuse the dog shaking around. They have sent me an updated nozzle housing with 
a different wheel design. However, the nozzle is still of very piss poor quality plastic. So I don't expect this to actually last much longer. We're gonna go ahead and start putting this together. Um, it reuses most of the same parts, which is interesting. I, I wasn't quite expecting some of these things, some of the, particularly some of the Panasonic stuff, I would have thought they would have maybe redesigned a little bit of this, but they sure didn't. Uh, so we're gonna go put this in, and this will have like an eccentric way that it goes in. Let's see if we can do this without it breaking. Oh, that was a pucker factor right there. Um, the next thing to do is to put that thing in, and then this guy. Um, this guy's always really stiff to put in. I actually like to do it this way, to give it just a, with the end of a screwdriver. I find that this usually puts it in pretty nicely. That works. And I'm amazed that this piece is still functional. These break left and right on these things. Um, yeah, I know it says ABS in big letters, but really, is it? Let's uh, put this hunk of junk in here. And I, uh, I didn't unwire this. Usually I unwire them, but I was feeling adventurous and wanted to see if I could just do it without unwiring it. Put this piece. Oops. Get these felt things in where they should be. They like to wander on by themselves. And then the next thing to do, you'll notice there's a bunch of like marks. Alright. Now we got to take a screwdriver and I'm just going to take the wires and just kind of bend them where they should be. And it does naturally kind of sit where it should be, but it, they, they don't really fit in there too easily. You want to take a screwdriver and just kind of push them into place, like so. Alright, well that's all looking how it should. And then the next thing to do is put that back there. And upon doing this, we also have to make sure these felt things are where they should be. Yeah, another kind of leftover from the Panasonic Whirlpool days. Remove that. I just, you want to just do that for the sake of having everything fit in there. All right. This one's coming together better than the last one I did. I think the last one I did was the other design, so I think the newer design might be a little bit easier to put together. So we have, again, just it's just very messy how they do the wiring on these. Uh, they do like the bare minimum. I guess that's to be expected on something this cheap. But either way, I've never been a huge fan of how the wiring was done on, on these. Um, so next we're going to take our height adjustment. Don't lubricate this, just blow it out with compressed air. Uh, yeah, this doesn't respond too well to lubrication. And as I go to settle this thing in, I want to see where the wires are going to go. Because naturally they go under it. Is it how they come from the factory, like so. Um, yeah. I say, let's talk about design that's just been milked forever. Got just, they go. One thing that's not lining up is this. It is a little bit on the broken side, but it should work for this customer's needs. Again, going with the theme of the plastic is just absolutely horrendous quality on this. All right. So that all goes there. The, uh, you you want to check to make sure that this is lined up because it can go in either way. And you are supposed to, I did this kind of wrong, you are supposed to put this wire under this channel. All right, now this metal piece is in place. 
I did have to re-remove the neck. Should have done that first. And you can kind of see what this does. This holds tension on the motor and holds the motor in place. And it's holding a lot of tension in this newer design. More than I really recall ever in the traditional Whirlpool Kenmore sense. Which kind of makes me a little concerned putting this together. But what else am I going to do? Take this. And we get to thread some of these uh, screws for the very first time. And something I don't do is I don't tighten these all the way. I just kind of snug them. And I'll show you why. I'm going to put the belt on, give it a little bit of soap, smooths things out. And that belt goes on, right? And you can see where that pulls the motor. So now we're going to put the brush roller on into its position. Maybe. You see the motor's kind of moving with the brush roller. This is holding tension now on the brush roller and the motor is now much straighter. Now we're going to tighten the motor up. The other thing I'm noticing on this particular example is that sheet metal ain't straight. Ain't straight at all. So we're just gonna torque it a little bit. And that way the belt is not riding, touching the sheet metal. Um, I guess at this point we'll put these two big ass screws in. As well. Yeah, I don't like how torqued all that got. Now, what else are we gonna do? Hmm. Oh, that's what happens when you retrofit things. I still don't like how you can see how un unsettled all this seems. Height adjustment does not seem to be working how it should. So that's wonderful as well. I think the height adjustment might be broken. Let's see here. Yeah, it's the height adjustment is like coming out. The channel. I do have one of these. Papa. Dog is barking. Let's see. That's better. That's where it should be. It had just come unsettled. Ugh, the joy of Kenmore. As you can see, the wires just kind of sit loose in this channel. Uh, so yeah, I guess I could zip tie them down or something, but it's a Kenmore. It's not worthy of a zip tie. That all goes, and then we have basically two screws that go in. same length right there torque that down and as you can see all that moves and spins freely this is goes that's going to be let's go ahead and put the rest of the unit together all right time to put all this stuff back together i've rewired this off camera but that's self-explanatory how all that goes. This just kind of goes back in like so. This just clips in. Something to be said about these cord reels. They don't fail often. Just very, very basic. And now we're left with, well, this mess. And we have this thing, this thing, and this thing. All that just kind of goes together. The the thing I'm going to start with first is we are just going to put these in here. And we're just going to clip them to this. It does not matter which side is which. Just make sure they're secure. Oh, 
close to an electrical engineer will chime in about polarization and some stupid shit like that, but really, that's being kept polarized. So you, you can kind of see what's going on here, where everything goes, just like so. And yeah, that's that's how that fits in. That goes in this gasket, which I will, did the customer a nice favor and I washed, which helps revitalize it. I'm gonna put everything back. It's not wanting to fit in. There we go. Now the next thing to do set the wires up out of the way. There are like little wire holders everywhere, but there's quite a lot of them. All right, so this just clips onto here. Like so. And then everything just kind of seats in. There's like a rail, everything has to go in. And in this case, I'm not quite making the rail. There we go. On that side. There. There we go. And that is where everything goes. That clips in. Now the motor's in place. Um, there's a couple things going on here. The circuit board, which can go on right here. That just clips in. This little hose, you want to just make sure it's clean. This is for the full bag check suction. Um, if this doesn't work, one, there is actually like a neon light that can burn out, but more than likely what has happened is uh, this tube has just gotten stuck with shit. So yeah, and then this is all like maybe, maybe if you feel nice, this you might put all this back, but it just kind of floats here. Uh, yeah, that's basically it. Um, you want to clear any wires. Probably clear the motor wires from just this area. Because this is going to interact with that. And uh, yeah, pretty much screw that in place from there. And yep. And it's going to kind of fight you a little bit, but not too, too much. Now I know I was lazy, I didn't take that one part off, but you really do need to take this off. Whoops. Excellent. Guess that's not gonna turn on. Got the hose handle in place. Kind of makes sense when you think about it. And then this got really, it was just really scratched. Uh, so, yeah, we'll try and polish that later. All right. I'll put a link below to these if you need some bags or filters. So this is the proper bag. This is not what the machine came in and it's made out of the HEPA material. But again, as I said earlier, just never makes a great seal. Um, so do with that as you will. The other thing is we're gonna put new one of these in. It's definitely needed that. Do not operate without filter in place. No shit. And here is the new filter, which is in much better condition than the old one was this just kind of hides underneath this cover most customers do not notice this filter here
uh, put this piece on that goes there. Um, all right, let's get the hose. working. Oh, the power head motor doesn't sound great. This motor, wow. Just sounds bad. But that is what it is. It's got suction. It will do some cleaning now. So thanks for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if it helped you. Check out the links below to help support the channel and have yourself a wonderful day.